Well, I finally broke my Tundra. Okay, so today we're gonna cover the one year review of the Tundra. It's a 2019 Tundra with the limited package. We've put over 20,000 miles on it. Uh, that includes a 3,000 mile trip to Baja, Mexico, uh, at least three different off-roading trips to Utah, to Moab, and to Zion, and different areas like that. Uh, we've also done an additional 20 to 25 more local trips in Idaho on off-road trails and camping. Um, so it's definitely got some use. We've spent some time in the driver's seat. What I wanna cover is essentially what I don't like about it, what I do like about it, just the truck itself. I wanna cover the mods that I did to it that are my favorite that I would keep and not change. And then I wanna cover some of the mods that were definitely mistakes and wasted a lot of money uh, to make sure you guys don't make those same mistakes. And then I do wanna cover a little bit uh, in relation to the Tundra versus some of the competition that's out there right now. So that's what we're gonna cover today. Let's go ahead and jump into the first thing. Let's jump into what I don't like about the Tundra, because everybody else always starts with what is great. Okay, if you're talking about first impressions on the Toyota Tundra uh, that you don't like, let's just say it's very obvious that this is a dated platform and it hasn't been refreshed in a long time. Now, on some levels, that's been great. The engine, the transmission, these are bulletproof. They've been tested and used for so long, all possible kinks have basically been worked out of them. But when you're talking about things like the interior, the interior is far fallen very, very far behind a lot of the other competition out there. It's really funny, I read a review the other day on the Ford Raptor and they literally commented about the Ford Raptor and they said that the interior of the Ford Raptor has fallen behind the competition and they were specifically calling out uh, some of the finishes that Chevy's doing and some of the finishes that are uh, being done by Dodge because everybody's pretty impressed with some of Dodge's new finishes that everybody says are like Mercedes class level finishes. And it cracked me up because if I get out of my Tundra and I get into a Ford Raptor, I feel like I'm in a spaceship. And I'm not talking about driving or reliability or anything like that. I'm just talking about the actual interior of the vehicle. So Tundras have very basic finishes. The top tier package is still a very basic finish. I do wish that Tundra or Toyota will upgrade their interiors soon and, and kind of like catch up a little bit with everyone else. Now, the benefit of having these completely utilitarian, very, very boring interiors is that they've they've managed to do them right. They don't break, they don't fail. Um, I remember I had a Jeep Grand Cherokee and that has, you know, very, very nice finishes on the inside. Uh, but the thing is, everything would fall apart even when they weren't very old, like panels would fall apart, buttons would fall off. There was just like problems constantly with the interior. So the thing that Tundra is doing right is they've made a utilitarian experience it doesn't break, seems to hold up forever, but like, come on, can you build a little bit nicer interior and just offer a little bit more functionality? I'll give you a perfect example. Cup holders. Everybody else has figured out that cups are different shapes. Okay. There's fat ones, there's skinny ones. They've designed where the bottom of the cup holder can be smaller and the top is bigger to, to take a larger glass. They have inserts that pull out. Heck, even on my Forerunner, I actually had cup holders that at least had some of that functionality. You get into a Tundra, it's just like they, somebody would block of wood, carve hole. It, it's just not refined in any way. It, it's amazing to me that they can build an engine that can drive a million miles and then they can't design a cup holder. So I love Toyotas. I go to them for their reliability. I, I have for a long time. I've owned a lot of other cars, by the way. I've owned a Ford F-350. I've owned a Chevy Silverado. Like I said, I've owned some Jeeps. Um, I've owned some Subarus, not even trucks. Um, but I always come back to Toyotas because of their reliability. But come on, like seriously. Cup holders aren't hard, people. Toyota, listen to this video and give us cup holders that can work. You know what else is interesting? I, Hey, it's funny, this is so much cup holder stuff. Think of this back seat. They make this gloriously amazing, huge back seat that can fit three full grown adults very, very comfortably. Guess what? The only practical cup holders that can actually hold anything are built into the armrest that folds down in the middle. So if you have three children, you have no cup holders in the back seat. And it's just like everybody else figured out to like have the ones that fold out of the center console. 
Toyota? No. They figured out to have USB ports back there. Toyota? No. They're still giving you cigarette lighters or cigarette plugs that you plug a USB charger into. So, Toyota, with this next refresh on the Tundra, can you please try to catch it up? And even if you don't catch it up, can you figure out some basics like cup holders? That'd be wonderful. So yeah, the interior, it does leave a lot. But I will tell you this, with all the miles that we've logged and everything on it, what I, what I have been impressed with is like the seats, for example. They're comfortable. After driving for eight hours, my back doesn't hurt. It's got great lumbar support. It's got great adjustability. The seats are tough. They don't break down. That was a big complaint that I've had from a couple of my Ford buddies that bought like high-end packages on the Ford finishes. They've had problems where after about two years, the leather on the seats is just kind of like almost decomposing and flattening out and getting floppy and stuff. And you just don't really see that with the Toyota interiors. I don't even have any issues with that going on right now. I'm only a year in, but it's not even like close to the problems I've seen in some other people's vehicles. So um, yeah, the, the interior is still comfortable. Um, it's functional. It's a The Crew Max is a great design of space for adults. When you're going on long trips, you can have four adults in the vehicle and you have plenty of room and comfort for everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm a big, I am a big fan of the interior and I am a fan to a certain extent of the utilitarian design that leaves a little bit to be wanted, but also gives you very few things that can break. But come on, a little bit would be okay. So let's Let's talk about the things that I do like about it. I actually do, believe it or not, like the V8. A lot of people go, well, that thing has terrible gas mileage. And that's true and not true. By the time I loaded down my 4Runner with all the extra weight for overlanding with its weaker engine, I feel like it always had to work harder to carry all of that. And th the miles per gallon on a stock 4Runner versus a stock Tundra are obviously not that comparable. But by the time you add all that overland weight to both of them, the, the Tundra really doesn't get that much worse gas mileage than my 4Runner did. It was, it's literally within a mile or two on average once it's loaded down. So I'm not actually that big of a complainer about the miles per gallon because it has a powerful enough engine to haul that weight and not really work hard. And, uh, and it seems to work just fine. I actually love that it has a 38 gallon tank on it because that gives you a big tank and a lot of driving range, even though it, it doesn't have the best fuel efficiency. I am a big fan of the actual power. When you're driving this up thing up a huge grade with all that extra weight on my 4Runner, it was painful. It was so slow. The thing sounded like the engine was gonna explode. It's like pegged almost. With the Tundra, it just, it's fine. It has the power. It can move up hills fast and no issues. So I have, I actually am a fan of the drivetrain on it. Sure, when they get a new one and they redesign it, they're gonna give us a transmission with more gears, you know, instead of a, we're probably gonna end up with like a 10 speed or an eight speed or something like that transmission and some of that's gonna be awesome it'll shift smoother and stuff like that but um, but what it, for what it is right now it's incredibly durable it holds up and it performs well and as far as the four-wheel drive it is performed far better than I thought it would I thought it was gonna be too big too heavy and I thought it was gonna require a lot more work and a lot more modifications to get it to a capable level and it and it's actually performed really really well um, let's talk about it a little bit more in comparison to its competition. If you look at some of the competitors out there, you've got Dodge with their power wagons, you've got Ford with the Raptor, you've got um, Chevy. But the, one of the things that you're gonna notice, Toyotas are so well known for being overland and expedition style vehicles. To create a vehicle that has a TRD package and doesn't have a, a locker available, in my opinion, is actually kind of a complete joke. And this is from a Toyota fan, like total Toyota fanboy. It's a total joke that you can't get a locker in it. Half the expense of a locker is always the installation, right? So it, it the fact that you can't get a locker from the factory is just dumb because it naturally just automatically doubles the cost of a locker not being able to get it from the factory. And that's, to me, that's a huge annoyance. And I wouldn't even care if they had front and rear, even if they just had one locker option, that would be fine. That would still just be better than where we're at right now. They need to fix that. When they release the new version in whatever, 2021 or 2020, it seems like it's getting pushed out. They need to give us a TRD Pro package that brings back the locker. Because on a vehicle like that, if you're paying that much money extra for an, what's supposed to be kind of like an expert level off-roading package and you don't have a locker in it, I think that that's ridiculous. So yeah, bring the locker back, people. You've got it. You've got the options in the 4Runner. You've got the option in the Tacoma. And then for some reason, you just randomly decided nobody's going to want that in a TRD in a Tundra. It's not 
Not smart. Um, if you look at the Power Wagon has options for a locker. Uh, Ford has options for a locker. Basically everybody's got options for a locker except for Toyota right now. Not everybody, but the main competition that people are buying. So yeah, versus the competition, other than that, I think the shocks that they come with, the four wheel drive system that they have, all of those things perform well and, and in a lot of ways equally. A lot of people go, well, they have much better suspension system on a, like on the Raptor, but that, that's also a car that costs substantially more than the Tundra. One thing that I will tell you is if you buy a, like a limited Tundra, like a base model Tundra, but maybe get the limited so you have the nicer interior, the budget that you have left over versus buying a Raptor, you can go and put an excellent suspension system on it and, and be better than a Raptor. So. I'm okay with that kind of stuff. Things like lockers are just dumb because the installation itself is so much of the cost of it. It'd just be better to have it in there. And there's not like so many choices that you're worried that somebody's gonna rip out the locker that you put in there and put in a different one. You know what I mean? That's just not gonna be the case. Um, so competition wise, it's clear they're falling behind on some of the finer details, but they still aren't falling behind on, on reliability. These things are still, Toyota's still making the most bulletproof truck out there the most reliable the easiest to work on you know they're still living up to the Toyota name in all of those areas so very impressed with it in that way very impressed with the four-wheel drive far more capable truck than I ever thought it was gonna be and that's even when stock let's go ahead and jump into the comparison really quick that's kind of a key one is I bought a Tundra but I used to have a forerunner and before that I've had Toyota pickups so why in the world did I go with a Tundra with a full-size truck so now not comparing it to its competition but let's talk about the Tundra versus other Toyotas. The biggest thing here is in the Overland world, you really, it's such a new thing that that name kind of, people are still trying to figure out what that even means, overlanding, right? And the problem right now is you have four by four enthusiasts, you have off-road enthusiasts, you have rock crawling enthusiasts, and then you have overlanding. And everybody's kind of trying to cram a lot of it together while also trying to recognize that some of it is different from each other and sort it all out. So the, the reality is a full-size truck for overlanding, the only major downside to a full-size truck and overlanding is of course your miles per gallon, your fuel efficiency, because one of the main concepts of overlanding is that you actually do get out and drive a lot and go a lot of places and you cover a lot of miles, right? And that's definitely an issue with the Tundra. It'll be interesting to see someday if they really do get us a, a much more efficient engine without sacrificing reliability and, and power, right? Because then that could be an even more viable um, full-size overlander. Where you see people really knock a Tundra is that it has a longer wheelbase. So of course it's not going to be as good at off-roading and rock crawling and really, really aggressive 4 by 4 ing But the thing is, I will tell you this, I have been very, very pleasantly surprised. Now, some of that has only been possible because of the modifications that I've made to it, but I actually haven't modified this vehicle that much. So I have been impressed with what it can do on trails that everybody thinks are not made for full-size trucks. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the mods really quick. Let's cover the mods really quick. First off, the mods that I got where I feel like, no, I nailed it. I did it exactly right. These were definitely the right things for me in my situation. Number one is the Expedition One bumper that I put on the back of it. Uh, when you go up in size on tires, you can't fit your spare tire underneath the vehicle anymore. So then you would have to locate it to like the back of the truck. I would never put it on a roof rack because you don't want weight up high like that. So getting the Expedition One bumper, it's the most solid bumper out there that's made to handle up to a 37 inch spare tire. I've seen a lot of swing outs where when you stick a really, really large um, tire on it, they swing out and they start to sag over time and they're clearly under duress supporting that weight. Uh, but when you close them, they lock into place and that, uh, that shares the weight of the tire and it's okay, it's gonna survive. But when you see them swing out, you're always like, man, and after a couple years, that thing's just gonna snap off someday. Um, the Expedition One is completely solid, no issues there. They built a huge hinge on it um, that's super strong and durable. So I'm really impressed with that. Gets that back tire out of the back of the truck, which 
adds a ton of uh, storage space. So the thing is, if you're not going full expedition level overlander, and you can actually fit your tire in the back of the truck and then fit the rest of your camping stuff around it, then you should absolutely do that because that actually puts that weight of that tire in a better location above the axles in the back of the truck. And I would definitely never go with the ones that are like hooked into your hitch. I hit my hitch almost every time I go on really, really hard trails. The last thing I want is something sticking even farther out of my hitch, ruining my clearance. So yeah, Expedition One, can't speak highly enough of that. Not sponsored by them, paid cash for mine. Love it, totally would buy it again. Some of the other accessories that I put on, I do like the Old Man Emu BP-51. I'll actually do a video in the near future that will be a really short video, like about 10 minutes, just talking only about that. There are some things that you need to know when you install it to make them last the long haul, through the long haul, and not have problems with leaking and things like that. So I'll cover that, but I do believe that that is, uh, when it's properly set up and properly installed, that is a bulletproof kit that with its internal bypass system and everything offers an amazing ride, super adjustable, so you can tune it in on different road styles. I would totally go down that again for a Overland vehicle. I would highly recommend that. Um, it only gives you about a two and a half inch lift, so you don't get too tall. And what goes right along with that, getting a two and a half inch lift, I would definitely go with 35s on the Tundra. 35s with a two and a half inch lift with the right rims. My rims only do a plus one offset so that's actually one millimeter going into your truck, not pushing it out. With plus one offset with 35s and the two and a half inch lift, they don't rub at all. Even fully, fully drooped, fully, fully compressed, no rub. Even fully turning both directions. A lot of people don't believe that you can fit a 35 with that little of a lift and it's because they're running negative offsets on their rims. They're running like negative 44, negative 22, and that's pushing the tire farther outside of the wheel well and what's happening is instead of stuffing into the wheel well where it's made to take a tire stuff you're hitting the edge of your fender basically and you're grinding there get your offset correct put 35s on it i think that that was one of the best things i did for that extra clearance your tires in a lot of ways are your only true true lift and that got the pumpkin you know my differentials enough inches and with proper wheel placement and picking the lines i've been able to do trails that people just flat out a lot of people that i know didn't believe that full-size trucks could do. So yeah, those are the, the accessories that I feel like we did it right. Now I wanna talk really quickly, probably the most important part of this entire video, I wanna talk about the accessories that I got wrong. That could have saved probably at least a third of the cost of my entire build if I'd got all this right from day one. But even though I tried to have a plan of what I wanted for the vehicle from day one, I didn't have it perfectly and some of these mistakes were because of that. Number one mistake was I went with a medium duty leaf spring. So it was stronger than the factory leaf spring uh, that, that the truck came with, but it was a medium and there was a heavy duty one available. And when I thought about all the weight that I was gonna add to the back of the vehicle on day one, I knew I was gonna add a decent amount of weight, but I didn't realize how heavy you would actually get if you really get into overlanding a lot and start doing longer distance and longer days travel. Um, the other thing is we started combining longer distance and longer days along with rafting where we were bringing our rafting equipment to do whitewater rafting in different locations. So that's just a lot of weight. By the time you have your bed rack, you've got your tent, you have like a deck system in there with all your tools uh, for fixing things. If you break stuff, you've got all your camping supplies in there. You have all the food, um, you've got your water, you have your 35 inch spare tire um, and then you have all your rafting equipment this gets really really heavy and what was happening is just the back of my tundra was just sagging like crazy and then that gives you a bad ride when you really do get into the rough terrain because you've already eaten up a, a whole lot of your travel that way so that was a disaster what I had to do is I actually was leaving on a trip and I had no time and I had to just basically get some parts that were available here locally so what I did do is I actually installed an airbag system a Firestone airbag system it's controlled by Bluetooth so you can air it up really tight. Uh, 
while you're on the freeway and you're cornering on fast stuff. And then I could air it down when I would get off-roading and give it a little bit of flex. Now, the problem with a traditional airbag system is it's attached to your solid axle on the rear of the vehicle and then up to the top and it, it limits your articulation. So that's also a terrible thing to do to your vehicle. Too light of leaf springs and then to add an airbag. Uh, what you can get is they, there's several companies that make them and there's like an airbag harness. It attaches to the bottom of the airbag and then it attaches to your axle and it allows this flex where it allows the airbag to lift up off of the axle and come back down. That's a pretty ingenious design because then you can have an airbag without limiting your travel. I would still prefer to have no airbag and just get the proper leaf springs from day one. But if you are listening to this video and you are somebody that is going to use a Tundra for long-term overlanding and you are gonna have to handle all that weight, but also you're gonna tow. Um, to try to dial your vehicle in for no trailer and have it have a proper ride in rough off-roading and then also to be able to handle a trailer is very hard because if it's made to handle that much weight and you don't have that much weight your ride is very stiff and off-road is going to be very rough so if you do have a trailer don't be scared to go the airbag route just go the airbag route and get one of those saddles that it can sit on that will allow your vehicle to still have the full range of articulation a couple other mods that i think were mistakes there's two things i did wrong with my bed rack one is is I didn't do the research on how it secures to the vehicle and I ended up with one that doesn't secure to the vehicle very strongly um, it's not very well engineered how it secures to the vehicle I'm hoping they're changing this they probably are already changing this but the old design on these RCI racks that I have didn't secure to the vehicle very strongly the other thing that I've figured out over time is your racks that are above you know your roof rack and your bed rack you should be targeting aluminum on these not steel save the weight where you can going back to the weight conversation you're gonna have so much stuff that you're hauling that is gonna be heavy that you can't make any lighter um, I already have a new rack on order right now an aluminum rack from up top Overland so I'm excited to get that because it's lighter I'm excited to get it because the way that it secures to the bed of my truck is much more secure so I'm not so scared to like get in a car crash and have my whole rack slam into the back of my truck anymore and the other reason is with racks inevitably you will find a day that you're going to have to drill some holes in it to attach something. If you're drilling an aluminum rack, a little hole to attach something, you don't have to worry about rust. Whereas mine, I had to drill holes to attach my awning and of course within one month, even with trying to seal and it's already rusting. I would target aluminum racks. Prince who makes a great roof rack, that's what I have up there. I've had to drill holes into some of the bars on that to mount my Pelican actually, my Pelican cases. Those are aluminum, so it's so nice drilling that hole and just knowing I don't even have to worry about this, it's not gonna rust. So yeah, aluminum aluminum racks instead of steel. Okay, so final accessory that I think I should have done better on is the Addictive Desert Designs front bumper. It's a great bumper, it's a great design, it's high profile, so it, it doesn't hang down low, so you have great clearance when you're doing those really steep angles of entry. I haven't really hit it and drug it on anything because of that, so in a lot of ways, it's a really great bumper. But when you're overlanding a lot and you're doing 20,000 miles a year or more, um, especially out in the wilderness, things can happen, and one of the things that happened to us is we hit a deer and when we hit a deer I kind of had that realization that we're in a really remote area and if this deer instead of going under the vehicle would have popped up a little bit we would have probably ended up with a hole in our radiator and we would have been stranded so I really want to replace it at some point with a front bumper that's still a high profile bumper uh, but has a little bit of a bull bar that bumps up just high enough to deflect things away from the radiator so if it, it won't really break that grill and force that grill into the radiator. So I want to I want to get a little bit more radiator protection. The other thing that I realized is when you're an overlander, one of the most important tools that you have in a jam is your winch. And one of the problems is in order to use a winch, you really need to be able to see the winch. I have had it not work one time randomly where I went to use it and it just wouldn't turn on. And there is no way for me to easily see like, did a wire get loose or something? With that bumper, especially if you have a light bar in front of it, you can 
cannot see your winch at all. Even if you lay down under the vehicle, you can barely see it. In fact, I have to reach all the way under the bumper and around this crazy hook just to disengage and engage the clutch on it. Now, some people have solved that with that bumper by drilling a hole and adding an extension on the clutch so the clutch switch um, sticks out above the top of the bumper. But rather than completely tearing my winch to pieces and redesigning it, one thing I realized is I want a winch bumper that has a bull bar and I want one that has accessibility to the winch easily. So yeah, those are the main three things I think I got wrong. Other than that, I've been very happy with the vehicle. The vehicle has done incredibly well. Some of the new features that they have added, uh, like a, the, the adaptive cruise control is amazing, especially on long trips. And so is the auto brights. I hope in 2021, 2022, when they have the new one come out, I hope they have a little more effort into the interior. I hope they have a heck of a lot more effort into the cup holders. But other than that, reliability wise, this has been an amazing truck. I wouldn't go any other route. I almost forgot to tell you what I actually broke on my truck. Um, on this last trip to Moab, uh, we were off-roading on the trail up to top of the world. And for some reason, one of the seatbelts broke. Uh, you know, when you pull them out and they stick and then you kind of just like pull it and it goes back in and then you're good. Uh, we went by Toyota today actually, and they took a look at it and said that it is in fact broken. They said they're just gonna replace the whole entire module. They don't mess around with seat belts and repair them. They just put a brand new one in. So that is after 20,000 some odd miles of abuse and off-roading and trails and everything, the only thing that we have managed to break on our Tundra. Okay, one last quick note before we go. Uh, we have a huge new build project coming that we're really excited about. So hit the subscribe button to be notified when those videos come out. Also, today is my birthday, so maybe just throw me a bone and hit the subscribe button because of that. Uh, these videos actually take about 10 to 20 hours on average to actually make. Um, but yeah, support the channel, support the community, subscribe if you can. Really excited about the, the future build that we have coming up um, to talk you guys through. And uh, yeah, see you guys on a video soon.